Docs for Patient Care is an organization of regularly practicing doctors who recognize that the impending government legislation was going to rob you of your ability to make your own decisions about your own health care. We are advocates for our patients and we realize we could not allow that to happen. So we went to Washington to make sure that our elected representatives heard from real-life doctors who were taking care of real-life patients. These guys just need to keep it up and it makes a difference. It makes a big difference and uh, I told the guys yesterday that uh, a couple of my colleagues on the Democratic side of the aisle from Georgia uh, I think are listening very carefully. They did in the town hall meetings back home and uh, uh, I think they're kind of on the fence. So one or two of them are a part of the Blue Dog Coalition. Uh, and, you know, they're, we're not trying to kill everything. You know, we're just trying to make sure that we don't have this public option. If you believe that, you'll believe anything. Oh, and they're not going to cut any of your benefits. Right, right. So don't worry about that. And the quality is going to stay the same. Americans I mean, get that. The public gets that. Yeah. The public gets when he stands up and says, we're going to cut $500 billion out of Medicare and it's not going to change your benefits. Yeah. People scratch their heads and say, How could wait a minute, how can that be? There's a better way of doing this from a doctor's standpoint and a patient's standpoint. Well, look, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a voice and, and it's a... It, it is a message that is is being sold as supportive and being heard, but it's not being heard. I mean, you all, this is why you're all here today. We had a great opportunity to meet uh, in a rally type situation uh, in Washington, and we heard from many thought leaders in this field. We heard from congressmen, we heard from attorneys, and we heard from other doctors. We need health care reform done right, and that's why we're all here. American medical care is under assault, and your voices must be heard by Congress. Welcome to your nation's capital. Welcome to a rally that will be just the next series, one in a series of rallies that will result in patients and doctors being able to make medical decisions. How about that? Is that a good idea? This H.R. 3200, 1200 pages that's coming out of the House of Representatives, there is a strong public option in there because the leadership, including Speaker Pelosi, uh, and the chairs of all, of all the three committees of jurisdiction, one of which I serve on, uh, those members have said unequivocally that they want national health insurance. They want a single-payer system. They firmly believe that the government, the federal government, has to be the watchdog. Uh, they, they, it's, you know, we sit back and see them be the watchdog over General Motors, uh, and we see them be the watchdog over Big Oil, and they want, make no mistake about it, they want to be the watchdog over the health care system in this country, and they won't be satisfied until they get there, and we have a single-payer system. So we, we, are, we, are, we are going to stop it. The American health care system is sick, but it's not the physician's fault. There's nothing wrong with the way medicine is practiced in the United States. We have the best physicians in the world, with the best nurses, in the best hospitals, practicing the best medicine the world has ever seen. But the administration of health care is sick. The same people who have allowed the great, greatest medical system in the world to falter now want to patch it up. The same people who allowed the financial collapse want to fix health care? They want to turn all of health care over to the government who will then contract it out to health care money management corporations this is no different than merging banks and investment companies and then letting the SEC run it. It didn't work for the American people then, and it won't work now. It's a prescription for failure. Trust me, I'm a doctor. Mr. President, we don't need a massive new government spending increased bureaucracy and regulation. We should not punish individuals and businesses financially to achieve this goal. Right. Defensive medical practice is reality in America. It has become part of our culture in medicine. It is responsible for massive amounts of health care spending. We are here to work with you and the Congress to solve the real problems that have so long plagued our profession. We agree with you. 
that all people in America should have a way to obtain quality care. We do not agree with your proposals. We need real malpractice reform, not just the tip of a hat. We need to build on the successes of Texas and California. We need to end the obscene medical lottery in America and develop a system that truly and fairly compensates patients who have been harmed during their care. Who here would think that we have to stand up to protect our patients from our very own government? Unfortunately, we find ourselves in that unenviable position. There's an element in this government who believe that health care should be under their control. And whether this represents an ideology or something far more sinister is unclear. But what is clear is that this cannot and must not happen. Yes. President Obama began his campaign against doctors. We've heard him other, utter these slurs. Doctors want to take out tonsils instead of treating a sore throat. We want to cut off legs and receive $50,000 instead of taking care of diabetics. We're more concerned about malpractice reform than our patients. Said that on 60 Minutes. The list goes on. President Obama, shame on you. Shame on you for spreading these lies. What Congress and the White House is trying to do has nothing to do with fixing health care. It's about stealing one-fifth of the economy. It amounts to the largest transfer of dollars from the private sector to the government in history. This illegal seizure, according to many constitutional scholars, violates the third, the fourth, the fifth, the ninth, the tenth amendments. Any legislator who votes for it violates Article 6 of the Constitution, which requires members in both houses of Congress to, quote, be bound by oath or affirmation to support the Constitution. We understand that America has the finest health care in the world, and that 85 percent of all Americans are happy with the health care that they get. And the reason is that you can get what you need, when you need it, from doctors that are well qualified and highly trained. We need to make sure that that system persists in America. We need to make sure that our elected representatives hear that. Government-run health care is not going to be good for your health. It will insert a Washington bureaucrat between you and your doctor. That's not the way to get quality health care. Are there problems with the health care system? Sure there are. But there are common sense, market-driven solutions that will actually fix the problem and not burden our children and our grandchildren with trillions of dollars of debt. This is part of the message that we took to Washington. The other part of the message is that we will not stand still for a government-run health care system that will destroy the kind of health care that you are currently enjoying. This is the fight of our lives. We understand that if the government runs health care, it will be sea change in the way that health care is administered in this country. The time to fight is now. The time to stand up is now. We cannot afford to lose this fight because once implemented, government health care will never go away and socialized medicine will be a part of your life forever. In order to get involved, we'd like you to go to Docs for Patient Care, DOCS, the number four, patientcare.org. That's the place where you can make your voice heard and you can make a difference in this fight.